So, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's uh, webinar on, on Analyze Bus Open Data Service. This afternoon, we're going to uh, take a, uh, a look at some of the new enhanced analysis functions um, that have been uh, introduced and uh, and have plenty of time for uh, for Q and A. Um, so please do um, feel free to ask questions. Um, we would prefer that um, certainly during the um, presentations to be on the chat function that's available. Um, and um, then um, once we're into the uh, the Q and A, then we might need to, to uh, might want to uh, to to talk and be a bit more free. Um, this is being recorded um, and will be made available on the RTIG um, YouTube channel um, in the next couple of days. So you can uh, review um, what you've seen today or pass it on to colleagues and things like that. Um, we are um, running this um, event in conjunction um, with the Department of Transport and ETO World. Um, and uh, Ito will be um, providing um, most of the content for this. Um, so um, a bit about um, Artig quickly to uh, to get us going. Um, in case you've not come across us before, um, we're a uh, membership body for public transport technology stakeholders. Um, our members range from um, suppliers to bus operators to local authorities and um, central government bodies like the department of transport and transport for wales um, as well as consultants and we um, work on behalf of um, members and and the wider industry as well um, to help provide um, training and and support um, these days a lot of webinars um, previously face to face and one day hopefully we can uh, get back to some of those sort of things um, we also uh, develop best practice and standards to help uh, move things forward and provide advice when people are um, implementing systems and we work with um, European standards bodies such as SEN on the development of NetEx and um, Siri and, and other standards like that um, as well as doing them at a, at a UK level. Um, so that's an introduction to um, RTIG. Um, you've really come to um, hear about the Analyzed Bus Open Data Service and, and what's uh, been happening with that. Um, and so I'm going to um, hand over at this point to um, Ito World, to uh, Dan Jones, who's going to, uh, to lead this section for us. Welcome, Dan. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Tim. Um, I'll just share my screen and get going. Cool. Um, yeah, so welcome to this um, Analyze Bus Open Data uh, session. This is the third in, in a series of sessions we've done. Um, so today, um, I think we're going to have a quick look at some changes that we've recently made to the service, and then we're going to talk about what's upcoming next um, and, and show you some early designs of, of where, where we think the tool is, is heading uh, moving forward. Um, so before we do that, I'd just like to introduce us. So um, we are Ito World and, and we're the Department for Transport's technical partner for the Bus Open Data Service and, and the Analyze Bus Open Data Service as well. Um, there's three of us on the call today. I'm Dan Jones, I'm a product manager here at Ito World and I'll just let Patrick introduce himself as well. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, before I introduce myself, I was just going to say thank you for everyone uh, turning up. It's great to see the, the number of people uh, joining. Um, so, yeah, I'm Patrick Smallman. I'm the support engineer here at ETA World, and uh, I've been uh, giving uh, assistance with helping with any uh, user queries from, you know, people and organizations such as yourselves as well as providing uh, support on our other uh, transit hub services. So I'll uh, pass it on to Amy. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Dan. So I'm Amy Bridge. I'm project manager at ETO World, and I work across the bus open data program with DFT. Um, so that's BODS and also analyze bus open data. 
thank you both um and yeah as tim said if you have any questions as we go through please um put them in the chat and we'll address them at the end um so yeah thank you um i'll just run through what we we're going to talk about today so First of all, I'm just going to talk about um, the updates to the service, um, give you a quick overview demo of that new functionality, talk about what's what's next for ABOD and, and demo some kind of initial wireframes and designs for that functionality. Um, we, we've just started developing that new functionality, so it's a, a great stage to kind of hear your feedback, thoughts, opinions, and, and we can work that in as we move forward. Um, and we'll, we'll address all that in, in the questions at the end. Um, before we get into that, um, I just want to kind of recap for, for those who haven't attended before. Um, the the Analyze Bus Open Data service is, is a part of the kind of core bus open data service that you see here. So just thought I'd kind of recap what this is. Um, on the left, we have uh, data producers um, who are the operators and, and you provide schedules in trans exchange format, AVL in, in Siri VM and fares in, in NetX format into the service. You publish those. Um, and on the other side, we have uh, a consumer function where we provide this data out in, in its raw format and also in GTFS and, and GTFS RT um, via an API or, or direct downloads. Um, in the background, we kind of create a model of this um, timetable and, and real-time information, and we continuously archive all of that information down. Um, and it's that archive um, and, and real-time information um, upon which we can build the Analyze Bus Open Data service to provide um, a few different bits of functionality, mainly around schedule adherence right now and feed monitoring, and, and we're kind of still building this out as we go along. Um, so the aims of, of ABOD, um, broadly it's part of the DFT's ongoing investment in bus services. Um, we're aiming to support the national bus strategy, so that, that can include enhanced partnerships and the, the bus service improvement plans. Um, it, it will help a kind of broad range of different user groups, that be that government, local authority, regulators, or, or bus operators themselves, um, and, and hopefully helps you perform existing um, bus data analysis in faster and easier ways, um, get more accurate and detailed um, performance reports. Uh, because you've all got very similar views of the data, hopefully it improves collaboration between those different organizations. Um, and broadly allows you to identify um, some opportunities for network improvement and, and informs the transport policy and, and compliance monitoring um, across the industry. Um, to date, um, we've done a fair amount of user research to build out this service. So um, before we um, launched uh, ABOD, um, we'd already conducted uh, 42 interview sessions. So that's across the different user groups that I mentioned. Um, we did a number of process mapping workshops with DFT, DVSA and, and local authorities. Um, we, we did some knowledge sharing sessions um, with, with people within the industry that, that would be useful to talk to um, and did some strategy and policy workshops. Um, during the development phase and, and earlier this year, we've we continued to um, do interview sessions with and testing sessions with local authorities, operators and DFT. Um, did some more local authority workshops, knowledge sharing sessions, and so on. Um, so in total, so far, we've had about 81 um, sessions with users to help shape this service. Um, and, and just to give an idea of kind of uptake, since we launched this eight months ago, um, we've now got a kind of group of over 350 users, and, and that's across 150 or so organizations. Um, so broadly, that breaks down into D DFT and DVSA, and then around 100 operators and 50 authorities. So there's a large group of users um, already using this tool. Um, if you don't have access yet, um, I just want to briefly mention how, how you can get access. So um, the operators that, that you want to analyze must provide timetable and AVL information to the, to the bus open data service. Um, once you've done that, um, you can request an invitation to bus open data at dft.gov.uk. Um, you'll receive an invite that has a, an expiry time on it. So please make sure you accept that before it expires. If it does expire, just drop us another email and we can sort that out. Um, and yeah, if, if you, you're kind of having a look the first time and you're not seeing exactly what you expect, um, if something's missing or not quite right, please let us know, please drop us an email and, and Patrick um, can look into it and, and sort it out for you. Um, so now I'll move on to the updates, the service that we've had um, recently. So we've we've pushed out um, a 
kind of small update to the service this month and I'll just talk through what, what's changed there. Um, so to start with around the data itself, um, we recently changed our kind of matching strategy um, to, to be more closely aligned to um, tracking journey codes in the ticket machine element of the Siri VM feed and also tracking vehicle journey codes and matching them um, to the timetable. So in, in most cases, this gives very high or, or, or exact matching between the timetables and the AVL information. Um, where those references aren't consistently applied um, between the timetables and the AVL, we still can struggle to, to match vehicles. So please make sure you're um, providing as much information in, in the Siri VM feed as possible um, to help us with, with the matching. Um, broadly, we still see some operators providing either incorrect um, national operator codes um, or none at all um, in the timetable of the vehicle position data. Um, that can greatly harm the analysis. A lot of this is based based upon um, you providing those uh, knocks to us. Um, so please, as well, if, if you've noticed that those aren't in your data, please provide them to us and, and that'll improve what you're seeing in the service. Um, something else we've done recently is we've, we've stopped using the travel line data set to fill in gaps in, in ABOD. So previously where we weren't um, receiving any information via the bus open data service, um, we were using the, the the TNDS data set in order to provide something to you. Um, we stopped doing that and that's kind of to ensure we're matching against the latest information from BODS. Um, and that means that some operators may have seen analysis previously that has dropped out and that probably means that the data in, in BODS either doesn't exist or, or it's, it's not of um, the best quality for us to, to consume. Um, within the core service, we also have um, ETI profile validation available now. So that will help you kind of bring your data set in line with the PTI profile. Um, and we also have data quality reports that will highlight among a, a broad set of other things, incorrect um, usage of, of the national operator code. So please have a look at those validation reports. Please have a look at the data quality reports and, and um, try and um, address some of those items. That will really help what what you're seeing in, in the service in ABOD, um, but obviously also will help data consumers pick up that data and rep represent it to, to uh, passengers in the best way possible. Um, in the front end of the service, um, we have implemented um, an on-time performance summary page. So for those of you that have multiple operators that you look after, whether that's a local authority or, or a large operator, um, you can view data across all of these at the same time. So previously, um, you kind of had to go through one by one and look at each operator before um, kind of diving into the detail, whereas this gives you a kind of um, good overview of what's going on and, and hopefully allows you to easily identify what, what um, operators you need to look into further. Um, you can kind of search, sort and rank those operators in order to quickly highlight anything that needs more focus. Um, and there's a sort of um, graph that we can I can show you in a second that allows you to see if there's been any uh, significant changes to the performance over time. Um, and, and that will allow you to, to identify what, what needs to be looked into further. Um, the other um, feature that we introduced was um, a map based view of on time performance. So for each line now we have a tab that represents a map um, or where, where the service runs and it gives an overview um, not only of the shape of the route and the order of the stops, but it highlights where those stops have an abnormally large number of early or late departures. Um, so hopefully that will allow you to easily draw your attention to the to where problems might be on those services. Um, and we also have given the ability to view average delays per stop on those routes. So you can see a bit more information about those delays. Um, so I'll just switch over now to the main service and we can run through um, those changes. If you give me one second. Um, so this is the, the the Analyzed Bus Open Data Service. I, I'm not going to run into loads of detail about the um, existing features. The, the, these were covered in previous webinars and, and um, there'll be videos of those around if, if you wish to kind of go over that. Um, I'll just run through those two changes that we spoke about. Um, so when you click into the on-time performance section here, before that would 
have taken you to the first operator that you had in, in your list of operators. Um, now this takes you to an overview of, of all of the data you have available. So still we have the same um, date filters, date pickers, um, timing point filters and so on, um, all that we had previously um, that you can use uh, to filter this data. Um, we have some summary metrics, so the number of overall departures recorded, um, the percentage of on-time early and late departures for all of the um, operators that you have in your profile, um, and then a list of operators below. Um, so this gives quickly an overview of the metrics for each operator. Um, and as I said, you can sort these um, from, from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. Um, and you can also quickly have a look at um, each day's on-time performance across the time range that you selected. So that'll allow you to easily identify if there's any um, kind of systemic problems that keep reoccurring or if the performance has kind of greatly increased or decreased during that time. Um, you can also search for an operator. So if you have a very large list, you can use the search to find an operator that you want to look into further. Um, so that was the first feature that I, I spoke about. Um, we'll just run through the second feature. Um, so this is the map-based view of, of the on-time performance. Um, so here we have a new tab um, that will load up a map of the service. Um, to start with, we have uh, the option just to view the route without any kind of overlaid information. If you want to see where the stops are positioned and what the route looks like um, within our service, you can do so here. Um, and if you hover over the stops, the stop clusters, it'll tell you which stops are within those areas. Um, we have um, the ability to see on-time performance um, across this route. So that will quickly highlight any areas that are either kind of abnormally early um, in the time range you've selected or abnormally late. Um, so here we see um, a kind of scale for that just to help you out. If there are any purple dots, that means they're kind of broadly on time most of the time. Um, so there's no kind of um, highlighted things to look into. Um, you can pick specific areas and as you zoom in, um, these stop clusters um, kind of break out to give you some more information about what you're seeing. Um, so you'll be able to quickly identify if, if there are kind of areas of the route that are significantly early or significantly late. Um, so if we just zoom in a bit more on this area, eventually it will kind of um, decluster into the individual stops. Um, so you can see here we have a significant number of early departures at the stop. Um, and you can see the shape of this route. This is likely to be kind of the start of the route. Um, and again, this is likely to be the end of the route. Um, so you, you can see this is not likely to be a timing point, so it may not be an issue, but you can start to see where you might have early departures and where this might um, begin affecting the passenger experience. Um, you can also look at delays um, at each stop, average delays, um, by clicking this center button here. Um, so this gives you a view of each of these stops, what are the average delays the passenger is experiencing. Um, Again, you can apply filters, as I mentioned before. So I just wanted to mention if, for example, you said in the last 28 days, I only want to look at Fridays um, in the afternoon, you can quickly apply these filters. Um, and once you click to apply them, that'll update the data you're looking at here. Um, and as you zoom in again, um, the level of detail will get kind of more fine grained as you zoom in and you'll start to see areas where you've either got significantly um, early departures or significantly late departures as well. So you can see the average delay the passengers experiencing. Um, so those are the two, two features we've just introduced. Um, so hopefully you can make use of those. And if you have any feedback, um, just, just let us know. And, and again, we're constantly developing the service and, and making changes and so on. So any feedback we get um, is really helpful. Um, I'll just jump back to my presentation now. So I just wanted to talk through um, what's next, what, what we're working on right now. Um, so we want to provide some functionality that will assist with um, bus service improvement plans. And, and essentially that means um, initially we're gonna allow operators and authorities a view of the network um, defined by important corridors. Um, 
So we're going to, going to allow the user of the service to be able to create and save their own corridors um, that are relevant to them, that they wish to monitor. Um, and again, this will kind of be assisted by, by the use of a map. Um, we aim to display metrics for these corridors by uh, reports or, or via a map then, and we want to focus on metrics that have kind of been mentioned in the BSIP guidance. Um, initially, we aim to focus on journey time um, along the corridor. Later, uh, we want to expand that to more metrics and, and we'll be getting feedback as we go along. Um, so things like frequency and reliability, we'll want to work into this feature over time as well. Um, so I just want to walk you through the kind of designs that we have at the moment for this functionality, just to, so everyone gets to see those. Um, again, as I mentioned, this isn't the, what I'm going to show you as a design. It's not, um, it's not kind of built functionality. Um, our developers are currently um, beginning to build this functionality. So um, eventually we'll have something to see in the service, but for now it's just um, by the designs that I'm about to show you. So I'll just switch over to my other screen. So I'll walk you through the kind of two main parts of this um, feature. Um, firstly, the ability to kind of create and save corridors and then also to view information um, by those corridors as well. Um, so when you come to the service, you'll have a list of corridors that you kind of wish to monitor. Um, and essentially here, this will be for be create as you create these corridors, they'll be saved to your organization. So anyone within your organization can can have a look at the corridors that, that are relevant to you. Um, you can click here to create a corridor. Um, and, and what we will do to start with is ask you to name the corridor. So you have that for reference later on and search for an initial stop to start building this corridor. Um, once you've kind of searched for a stop, we can display matching stops and you can start to to select the stops that are relevant. Um, and as you go through, we'll, we'll ask you to sort of build the, a corridor that's um, kind of logically coherent along um, a set of service patterns. Um, so you can do that and you can add the stops that are relevant to you that you wish to monitor. Um, and you can keep, keep doing that until you've kind of built up um, the corridor that you wish to monitor over time. Um, once you've done that um, and, and you're happy with it, um, you can click finish and this will save that information um, and we'll show you a list of all the corridors um, with some summary information. So it'll show you the number of stops within that corridor. Um, it will show you the number of recorded um, transits. So this is the number of, essentially the number of journeys that have run along that corridor um, in, in the time period you've selected. It will show you the average journey time and then we'll also provide, um, similar to the, the graph that I just showed you before, it will show you um, a graph of the journey time over the the period of time that you've selected. So you'll be able to see if this corridor is kind of getting better or worse um, in, in relation to journey time. So I'll just um, switch over to showing you what this will look like once you click through. Um, so you'll be able to see um, some kind of summary information for this corridor for the time period you've selected. Again, you'll be able to apply all the same filters that we had previously. Um, so you'll be able to select particular days of the week, particular hours of the day to kind of um, filter the view that you want to see here. Um, and we'll provide information for the number of um, transits that we've seen along that corridor, the number of different services that, that run along that corridor, um, the average journey time for passengers um, and any kind of missing data that we've, we've, we've seen. So where we were expecting um, something to long run along that corridor, but it didn't. Um, you'll see a map of, of the corridor below, and then you'll also see some graphs um, for journey time over the period of time you've selected. So this will show you sort of the average journey time, but it'll also show you the variability. So it'll show you um, at the bottom of these lines what the minimum journey time for that corridor was and what the maximum was. Um, so it gives you a good idea of not only what the average journey time was, was, but also if this was sort of very variable for the passengers as well. Um, we'll provide um, distribution graphs, breakdowns by time of day, day of the week, as, as you also have for on-time performance. Um, and below, for, for those corridors that have um, different services and operators running along them, um, we will provide a breakdown of, of the different lines and similar information for those, so scheduled um, transits, recorded transits, and then average journey time um, for, for those lines as well. 
um, and, and we'll also eventually allow you to export that data into a report as well. Um, at the top, we'll also let you see the same information for these individual segments. So for each stop to stop segment, you can click on that, all the information will update um, and you can see um, more granular information that will hopefully allow, allow you to work out if there's a particular part of this corridor that's kind of contributing um, more than its fair share towards uh, the journey time. Um, journey time is just the first metric, as I mentioned, as, as we sort of build this feature out, we want to add more that are relevant to specifically the bus service improvement plans um, and anything else that, that might be useful. So please provide as, as much feedback as you can and, and we can um, work that in um, to the service as we go. Switch back to my presentation. So I wanted to leave enough time for questions and I can see the chat has been quite busy whilst I've been talking. Um, so I'm, I'm now gonna open the floor to any questions that you've had or, or just any kind of comments, thoughts and feedback. So I wonder, Amy, if, if you've got anything in there for me to start with. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, so as you say, there has been a little bit of activity in the chat. So thank you to everybody who has um, been um, putting questions and feedback in there. Um, there's a couple of questions that came in in the last few minutes. And so when you were talking about being able to export reports in the future, Tony Brown has asked, can we export graphs too in addition to the data? Um we, because we haven't built the feature yet, the, the answer is probably going to be broadly, um, potentially, we'd have to speak, we still need to speak to some users about this. So that piece of feedback is really valuable for us to understand um, if, if that's going to be useful for everyone. Um, and if we see that kind of trend across all the different users, then then for sure we'd, we'd aim to build that in. Um, I think initially we, we probably will expect that to be a CSV export of just the table of information. Um, but if we see kind of strong interest for, for the graphs to be exported, we can have a look at that as well. Thank you, Dan. Um, and Mark Taylor has um, posted a question, um, I think to do with the um, designs that you were showing towards the end there. Um, why do you call a journey a transit? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, <laughs> does anyone have any better suggestions? We're, <laughs> we're happy to change the wording. Um, Broadly, because that's that's kind of what the best wording is that we could come up with so far. So essentially, has a has a vehicle transited the corridor? Um, if if you can think of better words, we're happy to to hear. Trip, I see a suggestion there. Um, but yeah, please do let us know. We can make minor tweaks like that if it's if it's confusing for people. Thanks, Dan. Um, there was a little bit of discussion in the chat earlier on around accessing the map based feature that you were demonstrating earlier and I think that everybody who was struggling uh, earlier on to find that that made themselves known anyway in the chat I think that everybody found it but I just wondered Dan if you might be able to go back into um, analyze bus open data just to show everybody how to navigate to the map based feature um, just in case anybody else um, is is struggling to find it and yeah, as Dan sure. goes, if anybody wants us to kind of go back over it at any point or is still struggling, please let us know in the chat. Yeah, um, I would say as well, if if you kind of had the browser open for quite a while, if if you do a control shift R or kind of forced refresh, um, if you're not seeing the feature at all, then that might help as well. Um, but essentially from the dashboard, you click into on time performance, um, you find the operator that you want to have a look at, um, you need to go to the line level, so drill down into wh whichever line you want to look at, and then there should be a tab for, for map. Um, and then once you click on there, you should be able to see it. Thanks, Dan. If anybody's got any follow on questions from that, just let us know. Um, so, Helen has asked um i want to export on time performance results per period for all of my area how can i do that um so in terms of export at the moment as i mentioned we haven't built the feature yet so um this hopefully um will be representative of, of 
sort of the whole of the area um, for all the operators that have been assigned to you. Um, we have had some feedback before that this isn't quite right because um, we are assigning kind of entire operators to local authorities, for example, where they may only have um, a kind of collection of lines for that operator running through the area. And we're working on that feedback at the moment. Um, but until then, this this is essentially as, as good as we can get to an, to an export of a report um, via either copy and pasting this table or or screenshotting it. Um, but essentially, at some point, we'll have a button at the bottom of this that'll allow you to export that as well. But it's it's not yet there at the moment. Yeah, thank you, Dan. And Tony Brown provided a bit more feedback around that area as well. And so, um, as Dan says, we're looking to build in the um, report export functionality later in the year and so thank you everybody who's given feedback on that so far we'll factor in your your comments um, and Mark Taylor has also made an observation isn't a journey a journey full stop you use journey time elsewhere <clears throat> um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I quite get the um I think response. I think that this may be in relation to the terminology for for trip or transits earlier on. Yeah, I think you're right. I think journey is potentially the, the easiest <laughs> way to describe it, considering we're using it elsewhere. Um, so thanks. Thank you, Dan. Um, we'll just give it another moment in case anybody has any remaining questions. If you do have any more questions or feedback, please post it in the chat and we will um, answer those before we wrap up. Um, just whilst we're waiting to see if anybody does have any remaining questions, just to also say that we do have a feedback survey, which we will distribute um, towards the end of this webinar. I'll post it in the chat shortly, but it will also come out on email to everybody who registered for this webinar. Um, it's another opportunity for you to give us some feedback, both about how you feel about Analyze Bus Open Data and what's useful and what's less useful to you, and also any feedback about future um, features that you haven't been able to give during the webinar. And so if you do have feedback, we would really appreciate it if you could fill out the, the survey afterwards. Um, and we really do welcome the feedback. So, so please, um, yeah, t tell us your thoughts. Um, I can see that we've just had a, a little flurry of messages. So just looking over those a moment. So Dan, um, Kevin Hawkins has asked, some ETM reports exclude arrivals at the last point on a journey. What does the BODS calculate from just departures or arrivals as well? Would you like to clarify um, yes. the calculations? So all the calculations are based on departures um, and it, that means we exclude the kind of final stop on the journey um, from that. But yeah, it's, it's only departures and we do exclude the final stop. Thank you, Dan. Um, and Phil has asked, are there any written instructions on how to do all of this? Um, at present, Phil, there isn't. Um, if people would be interested in having um, some more kind of written reference guides, then we'd be really interested to know the demand for that. So far, we've not had a huge amount of demand for it, but if you guys would find that useful, um, could I ask anyone who would be interested in that to mention that as part of the follow-on survey? And we can definitely consider that. Um, and then Helen has asked, um, before the export function is implemented, would you consider providing the data in Excel for the purpose of the BSIP analysis? Um, again, I think, Dan, would it be right to say that that can be something that we consider implementing um, as part of the, the reporting functionality and if there are things that will take us less time to implement so that it's accessible sooner rather than later, then we could look at prioritizing that? Yeah, we can we can do. I think um, a few people have have mentioned this now, so we could we could prioritise that and, and bring that forward. Um, I, I think it's difficult for us to provide the Excel to everyone because it because it's quite a manual process for us to do do that until we've implemented the feature. Um, but but we're certainly hearing that it seems to be a high priority. Yeah, thanks, Dan. And there's another comment from Rob West um, along a similar line um, suggesting that maybe an um, access via an API could be an alternative and so um, yeah we will factor that in also to the considerations Rob thank you. Um, Tony has also asked 
um, was there an ETA on when the corridor functionality will be provided through ABOD? Um, yeah, so at the moment we're aiming for the end of September um, for that. Thanks, Dan. And Alison has asked, as per Kevin's comment above, how do we then find the detail on arrival at the last stop uh, at the last stop if only departures are calculated? So at the moment you can't. Um, we do store this information, so I think if people would find that useful, we can we can kind of look at that feedback. Um, so far, we haven't heard that, but that doesn't mean that it won't be useful to people. So, um, so yeah, I think we can take that as some some feedback to talk talk to the team about. Um, but yeah, we we do have that information, so we we would be able to expose it if it's useful for people. Brilliant. Thank you, Alison. Thank you, Dan. Um, I have just posted in the chat the link to the feedback survey. As I say, if you don't grab it just now, it will come to you by email as well. But um, just to reiterate, we'd really encourage everyone to, to give feedback and in particular on some of the comments that we've had in the last 10 minutes or so, um, if, if anybody particularly wants to express um, an interest in, in some of the things that we've been discussing, then please let us know via the feedback survey um, and anything else that we haven't had a chance to cover today. Um, I think that the, the questions on the chat have slowed up, Dan, um, and so I think we will hand back to you to finish up. Sure. So, yeah, the only thing I wanted to say is is if you don't have access or if you know someone who you think should have access, then then please um, get in touch with us um, and, and let us know. And we can we can sort that out for you. Um, but, yeah, apart from that, I just want to say thank you for, for everyone for attending. Hopefully it's it's been useful for you. And um, thanks for all the feedback. That's really useful for us as we build the service. Um, I'll just hand back to Tim now. Thank you, Dan. Um... So, um, as been said a number of times, um, there's been some previous um, sessions to introduce the service and, and look at different aspects of it. Those are all available on um, the Arctic website. There's a there's an ABOD page that looks at um, all of those and has got links to all of the uh, the previous session recordings and uh, and announces. Um, future sessions. Um, there will be some more sessions um, over the coming months. Um, we'll advertise those through um, um, places like the Arctic newsletter, the PTIC newsletter, um, ATCO and um, the operator uh, groups and travel line. Um, so um, should be fairly easy to, uh, to spot when they're uh, coming up. Um, and uh, you'll be able to uh, join us for those. Um, please do feel free to um, send through um, questions and um, ideas to the uh, to the BODS um, email address that was shared earlier, um, and uh, Anita will pick those up and um, get back to you on questions and uh, put suggestions and things like that into the uh, into the development plan. Um, I'd like to um, thank um, Dan, Patrick and Amy for um, their um, input this afternoon and running the presentations and questions and responses. Um, and I'd like to, uh, to thank you um, for taking time out of your day today um in the middle of august to uh, to hear about um abods um and hope you have um a good rest of the day um and if you want to find out more about the work of artig then contact details are on the screen thank you everybody thank you for watching this artig webinar to find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.